Okay, we're going to talk about Ampere's Law. And we're going to talk about this in terms of multivariable calculus because everybody in the class has had multivariable calculus. Now, you had it from some fool that didn't teach it enough, but wait, 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 you had it from me, didn't you? Well, okay. Um, um, be that as it may, you've had it, but you won't really master it until you've used it in subsequent courses. Some people did a much better job of mastering it than others, but until you keep bringing it back and keep thinking about it, it's probably not going to become second nature to you. Uh, I do warn you that uh, if you get into a subsequent electromagnetism course, uh, a hydrodynamics course, uh, a thermodynamics course at a rigorous level, uh, you're going to be bringing it back, so I want to remind you of the connections. Okay, so Green's theorem, if you remember, uh, can be generalized to uh, the form f dot n dA is the integral over the boundary of del dot f dot ds. Uh, and somebody asked about order of operations, and um, if you did f dot ds first, you wouldn't be able to cross the del operator with it. The del operator has to act on a vector, and f dot ds is going to be a scalar, so it wouldn't make any sense to do f dot ds. But it was a good question, and I'll emphasize it by putting a couple of parentheses there. Uh, it only makes sense one way, and that's this way. And if you tried to do it, you would discover that. But uh, cross product uh, before dot product, okay? <coughs> um, and I'm not going to talk about this in detail. Go back and review Green's theorem and its generalization to Stokes' theorem because really what we're talking about here, Ampere's Law, is a, a, an expression of Stokes' theorem. Um, in any case, this becomes Ampere's Law, and Ampere's Law says that if you take 4 pi k prime, which is another way of saying mu naught, if you wish, k prime being easier to remember than mu naught, but uh, so I, I, I do use k prime, and your textbook doesn't, many do. Uh, we integrate, and this is intuitive, I'm doing a little hand waving here, uh, because I don't expect you to go back to all the details of multivariable calculus, which after all is not a prerequisite for this course. We're just using it since you've been exposed to it to help you uh, see the context. Okay. You take the dot product of the current with the normal vector and multiply by the area. Okay, so uh, instead of f dot n, you're doing 4 pi k prime times the current dot n. And that is what we call your current flux. Okay. Um, so that this is uh, flux of the current. And think of this analogously with the 4 pi k cube that you use for Gauss's law. 4 pi k times the total charge enclosed, etc. Uh, so this is 4 pi k prime times the current enclosed by some boundary. And this is over a surface. This is a surface integral. Um, you could use a flat surface bounded by uh, a, a curve that's confined within some plane. Um, but you can generalize it uh, where the boundary is uh, more complex, but it's not necessary for what we're going to use it for. Uh, so we're going to really be talking about the integral of the current dotted with a normal vector <coughs> over a plane region and the boundary being a curve in the plane region. It's going to turn out that the region is a rectangle and the boundary is just the boundary of the rectangle. We'll see that in a minute. Okay. So what this is saying now is that the flux of a current through some area is equal to the line integral of the magnetic field around the boundary. And that's Ampere's law. Um, the flux is 4 pi k prime times the current penetrating the region, which is what you get by the integral of the current dotted with the normal vector. We're going to set up a region where the current penetrates the region perpendicular to the region. And I 
put an arrow here on Ampere's Law. I did this later after I'd started writing in red. Uh, Ampere's Law is really this statement up here. Not this clarification of what we mean by flux. Hopefully it's a clarification. Okay, now we're going to uh, apply Ampere's Law, and we can apply Ampere's Law to get the current of a long straight line charge and many other configurations. The one we're going to look at is a solenoid. And we're going to have a picture that looks something like this, and I'll explain that in the next clip.